okay what are we saying guys the quality should be better today because i put it on 4k now um i was wondering why the settings and stuff like why it looked bad but should look better today gonna be going for a full mo mobility day absolutely freezing out here absolutely freezing but consistency is gonna be the biggest thing that makes the difference like if you have shit days you're gonna have shit days get the work in you gotta lock in every single day even if it's not the best day even if you don't have a great day those days where you're not feeling great and you're not having a great day are gonna be better in the long run like you're you and after a lot of the time you'll, you'll start doing it like i'll probably start doing this and i'll get warm like it's just bad to start with it's just cold to start with once i warm up it'll be all good but yeah you know the vibes let's go always starting with blood flow to the knees keeping them healthy hopefully the squat rack doesn't fall apart oh i'm still so sore from i done the workout that you guys saw two days ago Oh, and my quads were absolutely hammered. Oh, yeah, gone. Okay, gonna have to hold it here. Should probably put some weights down on it. Oh, well. But yeah, could barely walk yesterday. After I finished the 10 d 10 squats, I went on to film a bunch of reels, which are going to be coming out. I posted two today. And I was doing reverse Nordics, pistol squats all kinds of stuff so my quads are pretty battered it, again i could be like oh my body's sore my body's sore i can't work out but nah you gotta get it in and actually doing stuff like this doing mobility doing blood flow help you um recover quicker get back in the gym quicker like my next leg day is it supposed to be tomorrow i think it's supposed to be tomorrow or the day after one of the two but might not be ready for that quite yet but doing this kind of stuff getting the blood flow is going to help recover quicker so yeah we're going to build from the ground up always every day on my actual strength days tips and calves on these i'm a footballer so i like to get strength with my feet so i go slant calf um big toe stretch then tib stretch probably gonna have to do the big toe and tib on the bench rather than on the ground because it's muddy um but yeah i couldn't get into those positions when i first started out i do slant well i'm talking about this i couldn't get into like it's technically called caesar or something like that um because my knee like my acl was causing pressure my screws were causing pressure when i was sitting down on my knees so you just gotta lean forward like i'll show you in a sec um, how I lean forward on the Caesar to regress it. But yeah, getting that strength through the big toe is going to be essential for football players, athletes. Going to be faster, going to jump higher, going to sprint more. Like it's important. It's called the plantar fascia stretch. I'm not massively into the fascia stuff. I don't know if you've seen Football Entangled. He's a bit too far into it, I think. Like he says, no gym work. Like gym work, he says, gym work only makes you slower, only makes you a worse athlete. Well, ACG completely changes that narrative. I went from the slowest player on the on the pitch. I done eighty. I had five years at the sport, didn't play any football, didn't sprint, didn't run. Well, I tried. I kept getting injured. Um, but then I started doing ACG. Done ACG for I'm um, third year now. And I'm faster than ever. I'm better at football without even playing the sport. So it kind of knocks that narrative. I'm not saying playing the sport isn't important. 100% is, especially five-a-side games. Like, the best development I had as a player, technical, technical ability-wise, is when I was playing loads of five-a-side games. But athletic-wise, getting faster, getting more mobile, everything like that came by doing gym work so how you can say all oh, gym work is bad even like Messi like I put up a clip now like Messi's been doing chin ups and stuff Messi does gym work you're gonna say nah nah sorry mate you can't do gym work shut up no hate no hate by the way like he's a good guy um he done a presentation for Uncom um I actually quite like him as a person he's quite funny <laughs> but 
I don't agree with some of his opinions, and that's absolutely fine. I'm sure if we had a conversation about certain stuff, we'd maybe agree on a few things. Obviously, he went on Zach Woodward's podcast. Zach Woodward's a G, by the way. Um, he went on Zach Woods, Woodward's podcast. That was a really good one. They talked about certain stuff, and Zach Woodward is like ATG. So, um, yeah, I'm sure I'd agree with some stuff. Oh, I just, I just got my feet so wet checking if that was recording. So, yeah, I forgot to tell you, but on that exercise, big toe stretch, plantar fascia, that kind of stuff. To regress it, you want to come more forward. You're not putting, putting as much pressure on your knees, on your toes, anything like that. But you're really, when you're in this bottom position, you want to flex against the ground. Like, I even sometimes push, push up like I'm using the strength. The further you lean back, ooh, it's tough to start. I mean, it's even tough now, it hurts, but, not hurts, hurts, but, you know what I mean? But yeah, you want to really push the force into the ground. But yeah, and then, oh God, bloopers, what's going on? But yeah, slant calf into big toe, into tib stretch. You want to put, you can start even with the tib stretch just on the flat. I elevate it now. So I got a bit more advanced. Again, leaning forward is going to regress it. Leaning more back, it's going to open up more, be harder. Um, I do all these three. I'll do two or three sets of them. I probably won't put it all in the video. Probably just one set. Um, but key for footballers, like your key for all athletes, really. Your first point of contact with the ground is your feet. So you want to make sure they're mobile. You want to make sure they're strong again you can end up moving getting some work in like pushing through the top of the feet getting the strength in like this is going to be tough if you have knee injuries to start with because whoa you're not going to be able to sit on your knees like i can here like i remember i couldn't sit on my knees like this even recently because like i have screws in my knee like i have robotic knees <laughs> but so when you have stuff like that in your knees sometimes you can never restore it like you can everything's restorable in my opinion but it's just going to take time like it's anything like progressive overload i was talking to a rehab coach in uncom as well um he was saying i was talking to him about deep squats on my knees like once i get to about two minutes in a deep squat now it used to be like 30 seconds it starts to feel the pressure of the screw in my knee and he was like yeah it's just progressive overload like try two minutes and one second next time if you don't feel the pressure then but so yeah it's everything's progressive overload at your pain-free level that's important so yeah on the slant calf you want to drop your hips into it flex flex your tibs you you can put your other foot down and get more into it you can have your other foot back here but you don't want to be back here you want to really feel the stretch to start with you'll probably feel it more in the upper calf in the gastric as you get more mobile like now i just really feel it in the achilles in the stuff down here so that no you know your ankle mobility is getting better but to start with i used to have real kite tar kite tars, tight calves so i would feel it all in the gastric but now literally it's just in the achilles for me really <laughs> right now anyway so yeah, there is lots of work you can do and it all adds up. Like, you wouldn't think sitting in something like this is going to help your knees, but it is. It's going to help all parts of your body, especially because like our philosophy in ACG is built from the ground up. It's In most traditional training, we strengthen the hips, we strengthen our deadlifts, our squats, everything like that. But all these small muscles, do you know how many muscles we have in our feet and how many bones and stuff? It's crazy and we never do any strengthening for them and we clamp them into these, these shoes. And football boots are the worst. Maybe that's something I do one day. I create football boots for actual feet-shaped feet because <laughs> they're awful. Like I remember I've been wearing, like they're here, uncivilized sneakers for a while now. Um, and just doing barefoot training in the gym. And my feet started to get better, like spread out and that kind of stuff. Went back to playing football and I tried to put my football boots on after the game. My feet were cramping so much because your, your feet are literally like in, in these things. Like it's, it's crazy. Play ground yourself, play barefoot, 
get barefoot shoes obviously don't do it straight away like again everything's progressive overload if your feet are used to wearing shoes they're we used to wearing all these unnatural things if you go into playing barefoot straight away and you go into wearing barefoot shoes straight away it's gonna hurt your feet you're gonna get injuries so progressive load it like first try some barefoot shoes and then wear them like once a week then twice a week and then do training barefoot once a week like build it up you don't have to do everything at once everything is gonna add up over time yeah like this kind of exercise as well once you get more advanced is like it's not only stretching out my feet now stretching out my quads stretching out my hip flexors but this is because i'm quite advanced in it like when you're starting here that's pretty much just feet and then some pressure in your knees and stuff even if i take this walk alone got justin mucci coming on the knee pain workshop it's gonna he's gonna be there on the first day we haven't sorted out the time yet um but he's gonna be presenting on the importance of the back of the knee opening up the back of the knee which i'm gonna be doing some of today so we've just done some lower leg stuff so we'll go up the chain now probably either sometimes i like doing jefferson curls first sometimes i like see good mornings first i'll probably go i don't want to get my knees dirty as well doing couch stretch um yeah we'll, we'll do jefferson's first and then i'll do see good mornings after i usually do it the other way but i was just talking about opening up the back of the knee so I'll show you where I've got to. I started with elephant walks back in the day on the Zero A to G program, and that's where you need to start. With these kind of introducing your spine to rounding, like it takes time. Now I can hop into it and get down in this bottom and bounce down here because I've been doing it for a while. If I was to do that straight away, I would hurt my back. So start with start with elephant walks down here up here you can even start up here and just get used to being in that position get used to straightening your legs and then work down work down until you're on flat ground palms on the ground and then you could do some jeffersons then start to add weight probably go to about 40 kg today maybe 50 we'll see I personally like the bounces in the bottom, but obviously you want to, again, be careful with it. I know I can do the bounces in the bottom because I've been doing it for a long time, but it allows me to get more stretch in my hamstrings. So yeah, you don't only want to strengthen areas, you want stre to get strength through length. It's going to open it up a lot, lot more. If you have super tight hamstrings and they're pulling on your knees, like you can get them strong, not bad to get them strong. Do loads of hamstring curls, do loads of Nordic curls. But you wanna, maybe I'll do these ones from the side and I'll show you like the length that you're getting on these. Like it's literally a loaded stretch. Like, it's opening up everything. Zercher Jeffersons are my favourite right now. You can do them with just dumbbells, you can do anything, but I'm loving the Zerchers. Yeah, I'll probably go 40 today. I'm strengthening my hand. I'm excited for the knee pain workshop. I haven't put the details up of the days yet, but what's looking like is Monday is going to be training principles like the importance of certain stuff. Tuesday's probably going to be into the nutrition and recovery. Wednesday, I'm going to go through, because everyone that comes to my knee pain workshop is going to get access to my ebook, which has a program. It has loads of nutrition stuff in, recovery. It has everything you need to get out of knee pain. But I'm going to go through one of the days of the program, live, and then answer any questions during it. So if you want to see that, come to that. That's going to be Wednesday. And then Justin's going to be on for Thursday. And then Friday, I've got a special announcement. And also, I'm going to go for a case study of myself. What my injuries were, what I did to fix them, everything like that. Um, and then, yeah, special announcement at the end. 
but I appreciate everyone that signed up. I think got about 80 people coming to it so far. I'm gonna do another reel probably tomorrow promoting it one more time. See how many more people we can get in. Um, but it's gonna be gonna be cool, man. Gonna be cool. It's gonna be hosted on school. Okay, let's hit these forties. Probably not gonna be talking during a set. <sighs> Cut it. That is uneven. Okay, I can't count, that was uneven. We'll go again. really want to stress the importance of not rushing into a weighted version of these. I think Ben Patrick even says like he just stays at like quarter of his body weight and just goes for the massive stretch on it rather than going heavy. But sometimes you gotta have some fun. Like I personally love that movement right now and it's feeling good for me so yeah. probably go Jefferson's see you good morning probably just one more set of Jefferson's see you good morning opening up adductors groin stuff couch and then we might see how the splits are feeling should we go for a splits PR front splits I think my back hip flex is gonna be a bit tight today but we'll have a look stand up for my home even if I take this walk alone. If you want, you can also do a more advanced stretch on the Jefferson with a slant board. Because obviously, we talk about extreme long ranges. Like this is a long range movement for my hamstrings. But if you want to make extreme long range, you're also getting the stretch on the cast when you're using a slant board like this. So that's a way in a, uh, you can advance it as well. I like to do this on RDLs as well. Now that I'm good, like I... I'm quite flexible from the hamstrings on the RDLs, so I like to raise the front toes, get some more stretch in it. Um, but there, there's loads of ways you can progress without progressing the weight. It's all about tension, leverage, tension, range of motion, loads of stuff you can do before you touch heavy weights. Sometimes it's fun to lift heavy weights. That's why I'm doing it now. Wow, heavy for me. Some people watching this might be like, that's light. But on Jefferson curves, I think 40 kg, Two thirds of body weight, pretty, pretty heavy. So peaceful out here, man. Love working out out here. Got some birds chirping. Got the sheep watching me again. It's just beautiful and calm. Usually I've got like, I'm in the gym, got headphones in, music banging. Just talking to myself out in the wild. Birds chirping. Just chilling, man, enjoying life. Got my chickens out in the garden as well. So you missed my last Jefferson curl set. I'm gonna go into see good mornings now. See good mornings probably one of the best exercises you can do if you're a football player. Strengthen groin, low back, adductors, lengthen the glutes. Strength through length is so important man. Key form points on this, ankles in front of knees. And then when you're going down, keep your knees out wide and feel that stretch down in the groin in the adductor area. And then also keeping your back rounded. As a regression, you can see I've got the incline bench heightened. Some days your mobility might be better, some days it might be worse. But you wanna aim for hours to the bench. I'm probably gonna lower this, but I like to warm up just with a little less mobility. Make sure my glutes are feeling all right. My adductors, if you go through if you go into a strength through length exercise and you go straight into the bottom portion look i hurt my glute before because i had like 50 kg on the bar 
I was like, oh, I'll just go into it. And I went into it and like I had like a, a glute strain for a while, which I just fixed with short range exercises and then slowly progressing back to where I was on the seat of good morning. But yeah, low back strength is super important for um, overcoming inertia and sprint in the first 10, five, five, 10 seconds, getting off the mark. Posterior chain stuff is, is good for sprinting in general. You want to be as, as balanced in the front and the back. Um, see, good morning, it's just an amazing exercise though. Like, I think it was Louis Simmons or Charles Poliquin said, strong people have strong low backs. So, worst comes to worst and you don't know what to do. Strengthen your low, lower back because everything else will get stronger. Um, it will also help with your squat, both the depth and the strength in it. So, amazing exercise, you've got to do it. This combination of seated good morning and A to G split squat. I'm not gonna do split squats today, but just in general, if you do a su super set or just the two exercises in general, um, it's amazing. It opens up that groin, strengthens the front and the back. Like they're the probably two most important exercises for football players. Not, not saying you should skip out on anything at all. We wanna make everything equal. We wanna be structurally balanced. But if I were to pick just two exercises for football players, probably be the seat good morning and um, the ACG split squat, most likely. Okay, let's go. You might pull some funny faces when doing the seat good morning. Justin Mucci says, you want to kind of lift your ass. <laughs> that reel popped off and it was just him saying, lift your ass, <laughs> lift your ass. Like the entire time. So funny, man. What a coach. But yeah, over time you really want to work to flat bench here. Good mornings. Probably about... 66% of your body weight on the bar, at least. This right now is 30, so about half. But we're going reps, so. Depends. Something that has been an issue for me in the past is with my, when I had a bit of quad 10 nights flare up, I was doing see good mornings. And because you're going down into it and your pressure is like this, it, it might flare up a little bit. So, like I say, you can regress with incline bench. You can regress with weight. Take the bar off, use some dumbbells, or even just go body weight to start with. If, you're, if you've got low back pain and you want to rebuild, you want to open up your hips first, get blood flow to low traps, and then just do body weight stuff. Even that's going to be good coming down. And I feel like the lighter you go, the more you have to actively force yourself to get into the position. Whereas with something like the bar on your back, it kind of like pushes you into it yourself. So it'll probably give you a bit of more my muscle connection. If you go body weight, got to get after it every day. Got to get after it. What do you reckon? We stick at 30 or we'll go 40? Ha, let's try it. <laughs> let's try it. We'll see what happens. I've got to try these things. Like I'm the coach. I've got to try the pushing stuff like I pushed the sissy squats too far and I got injured but now I know how far to push the sissy squats <laughs> for my athletes for my clients for anyone like I want to be the one testing these things if I get hurt it's not that big of a deal obviously the content will suffer a little bit but it's better than getting my athletes hurt so yeah let's try let's try 40 it's not too heavy but it's not too heavy, like I've done 50 in the past, but I haven't done it like I stopped for a while. So we'll see how it is. Heavy. <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably 
not to do too many reps of that. So I'm always joking in one of the TikTok comments when I post to the Sea of Good Morning about a one rep max on the Sea of Good Morning. Like what happens? Because you just get your neck crushed. Um, if you're doing it on your own, stay shy of failure a little bit, a few reps. If you've got someone with you, you can do the failure. But like if you're in that bottom position, I guess you can chuck it over your head, but even still, yeah. Like you can still get good work and stay in a couple of reps, shy from failure. So just think about it. Hey, couch stretch and then we'll see how the splits go. Oh, I'm gonna get my joggers dirty though with couch. I'll do back for elevated split squats rather. <sighs> rather than couch. Similar thing. You're still getting the stretch through the back hip flexor. I still wanna get my knees dirty, so I'll do it this way. Just hold this for like 30 seconds on each side. Sometimes I like on a normal ATG split squat to elevate the back foot a little bit off the ground so you get more hip flexor work. Depends on what, how flexible you are where your current position is. I like to also sometimes put a bar just on the upper side of my glute, push down into the hip flexors. But like I say, depends. It depends. That's one of the answers like I give to people a lot in my DMs, like I feel bad. But people ask me, what should I do for this? What should I do for that? I'm like, it depends. So that's why the one-on-one -on -one coaching is good because I can figure out what your weak links are. I can figure out what we need to do rather than someone message, okay, I have this issue, what should I do? Like it depends, mate. Really, really depends on what your weak links are. Like some person can have knee issues because they're tight through the hamstrings, tight through the hips. Someone can have knee issues because, and they can be really, really mobile and it's just like a strength issue. So everything's individual. The good thing about ATG though, you kind of cover most of the bases. Like we do strength through length. So we're getting more mobile and we're getting stronger and we're building from the ground up and we're doing our hips and we're doing our lower legs and we're doing our knees and we're doing our everything. So we're thinking it more as like a no weak links rather than a let's just do this one thing and you'll get fixed. They're all crowded together today, over the other side. Hope you guys can see them. We'll finish off the video here. So yeah, beautiful day. L loving being out in nature. Thanks for watching guys, if you got this far, I appreciate you. Head to my um, three day, free five day workshop, starting on 5th of February through to 9th of February, Monday to Friday. We're gonna go through everything you need um, to get out of knee pain. Everyone that signs up also gets access to, it's just a pigeon there, my ebook has programs in nutrition, everything. So sign up and you'll get access to that. That'll be in the school. Um, also, all the live calls will be uploaded onto there. So if you miss any, you'll be able to watch them back. Um, post your wins in, in the chat if you get any. Uh, with using my stuff, that'd be amazing. But yeah, I hope to see, see you there. But this has been my mobility day. Not perfect, but every day is not perfect. See you later, guys.